Grandma used to pray, oh Lord, please save them from the evil snares and all the dangers that entangle. Yeah, though they walk in through the valley of the shadows, just prepare and make them fit for every battle because but I know they're bound to come and I know they're bound to fall. But in your bounty, Lord, preserve their beautiful home. Right. We still survive and offer grandma's prayers. Surrounded by the jungle and the lion's den. Tread light, cause these traps is inconspicuous. They hide right in plain sight. Thinking we don't see them when they linger. Look right beneath the surface. Then leave a trail of corpses. Crisis, prices, your life a disposable commodity. Like living in a fantasy condition to believe that the system even cares whether selling CDs or walking or driving or reading. Look, they don't even need a reason. It's just your breathing and being black. And it's such a pretty fall, a pretty fall It don't seem like we falling at all, at all It's just a GMO dream Where things are never really what they seem Please, kill the violins Tell them just to play me something pretty Cause this pretty city got me screaming bloody murder So they got me screaming This pretty city got me Got me on song, look, get your hand up on my pocket, distraction, so lazy they use the same tactics, like kind them with some trinkets, just don't let them get to thinking, that light bulb gets a blinking, you know niggas and ideas, oh dear, my dear, my dear, you may not know me, but I know you very well, for sight, for sight, they say hindsight is 2020, well tell me something, we gotta see that history is on repeat, and maybe it takes a beat and a melody to speak a little louder than the message in the clouds, or the essence in the air i swear my god is just so clear that a system driven by fear can never give us nothing but more of the same things things oh when it's such a pretty fall a pretty fall it don't seem like we've fallen at all it's just a gmo dream where things are never really what they seem please cue the violins tell them just to play me something pretty because this gritty city got me screaming it's murder Got me screaming, got me This gritty city got me, got me on song Liberté, liberté, vous faites quoi avec 
Madonna, Bob Kaiman, Voodoo ceremony, initiating Haitian liberation. Russian waters a la balas, there's no taming. Drown the orchestrators of this coup against their nation. Through political isolation, economic asphyxiation, Aristide was a stabilized, he wouldn't agree to privatization. That's when the US IMF him with sanctions, are blaming the places to the bicentennial celebration. The CIA organized landowners and merchants on the group 184 and convergence. Trained illegal insurgents, putting murders back into service. Papa Doc Lynch made Frav Henchman, to which the media was guiltless. But the people of Haiti are resilient, the future like their past will be brilliant. Black Jacobins be smashing the myth of white supremacy, both their legacy and destiny. It's time for death. Side <laughs> Tap the good people. We are live and direct. RSTV, you know what we do around here. We bring you that critical political action. We make sure that we give you what you need. We got to give the people what they need. That was my people, the welfare poets, Sac Passe. You know what I mean? They um again, if you're not familiar with the welfare poets, get up on them. Check out some of their earlier works. You know what I mean? They're, they're true to it. Not only are they cultural workers, but they're freedom fighters. You know, they, they put in work from, you know, all over the world. They give that, that Pan-African feel, you know, and that live band, and they make sure that, uh, you know, that we keep revolution in the forefront. Because sometimes, you know, folks be rapping for rapping's sake, and, you know, that ain't what it's about. Um, today, we have a freedom fighter, an attorney, Leslie Danto, she's a human rights and international law attorney. Uh, she's an award-winning playwright, performance poet, and cultural artist. Uh, she was born in Port-au-Prince, Haiti, but um, she's raised here in the U.S. She's a Haitian scholar and runs the Zelly Network, the Free Haiti Movement, the Haitian Lawyers Leadership Network, Zelly Designs, and Zelly Dio, Clean Water, Renewal, Power, and Skills Transfer for Haiti. Um, she's the author of 10 plays and a two book series and that is uh and, and so much more you know but um i think i met her about man 
30 plus years ago up in Connecticut, you know, uh, man, I think that was around 92. So y'all do the math. I ain't going to, you know, go too far on that, but yeah, 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 yeah. I'm happy to have on here for the second time. So without further ado, here we go. What's going on? Ezra Danto, how you feeling? How you doing, my brother? How you doing? I'm alive on arrival. I'm ready to burn it down, you know? Mm-hmm. Yes, 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 yes. It's a good day to be African. How you feel about that? I guess so. It definitely is. Every day has to be. Without a doubt, without a doubt. I want to start off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to start off because I know that, um, you know, your name has historical meaning, you know, and I want to uh, jump into that because I think that sometimes, you know, folks hear certain names and they just think that, you know, it's the name is cute or that, uh, you know, you just want to change your name and the sound a certain way or whatever. So we like to, you know, educate in order to liberate. So um, give us some background on where your name comes from. Sure. So Ezili Damto in the Haitian culture is the most powerful feminine uh archetype. She's the warrior mother. Um, That's what she is. And in our history, it was her irreducible essence that mounted the women at the the priestess at the Vodun ceremony that began the IET revolution back in 1791 after you know 300 years of european barbaric slavery so that's what it is that's where yeah. it comes from the most that's haitian true. the most african the most uh name because the africans who became haitian in the land of the tainos came from the congo the niger Nigeria, all the places, uh, uh, Angola. So they 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 are the amalgamated uh, tribes. You know, Dahomey, Benin, West Coast, and they all went back to Ezeli Danta. No doubt, no doubt. Appreciate you sharing that with the audience. Um, I wanna. I know that in about a week. It will mark 220 years since the uh, a powerful proclamation by Dessalines. 220 years, um, and I, I want to name my son after Dessalines, and he's you know he, he's his name is Kamati Dessalines. Shout out to Kamati Dessalines, so he don't have a choice. Uh, <laughs> there ain't no. I, I made a mistake and got this name. It is what it is. Um, For folks who are not familiar with that proclamation, I want to take it back because, you know, folks are looking at, uh, they're looking at the news and they're getting this, uh, this BS version of what's going on. And, you know, some people think that it started 20 years ago with the whole situation in 2004, which we'll talk about, but it goes beyond that and we can take it all the way back as to why these um, ruthless warmongers, um, these devils have been declaring war on Haiti for, you know, for hundreds of years now. So if you don't mind, let's talk about, you know, the beginnings because you mentioned Haitian revolution. And unfortunately, a lot of folks know nothing about it. In fact, I remember I had a store up in Bridgeport real quick and there was a sister used to come to through the store. And I said, um, one day I said, um, I said, where are you from? She said, I'm French. I said, French. <laughs> so wow. I laughed and I said, um, I said, you Haitian? She put her head down and said, yes. I said, why you put wow. your, head, your head down and you said she was French? Wow. So I, I schooled on the Haitian revolution and from that point, 
she came back a whole new person. So then she's like coming in with books and, you know, she's proud to be that, but she identified with a colonizer so long that she thought she was French. <laughs> and I'm just like, what the hell is French? But anyway, yeah. So if you don't mind tapping into that, you know, let's talk about that. Well, in the media right now, there's a PSYOP operation going on where they're bandying around the word revolutionary. Without hyperbole, without exaggeration, the warriors, the African warriors who fought the Haitian revolution are the greatest warriors to ever live on planet Earth. As far as we know in recorded history, they're the only ones that were able to beat their masters who had enslaved them in combat and to replace the masters and create a unique nation that has nothing to do with Jefferson's three-fifths human um, constitution. The constitution you're talking about for November 29th is it March 29th? Uh, April, no. April 8th. April. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's all good asleep. And it's early. <laughs> over there. So you have, you have this um, space here doing, you know, in Africa, we are obviously the people of, of the sun, the original to planet Earth. We've been around for... Um, thousands and thousands of years. Um, our, our history doesn't go back to his um, Abrahamic religion, you know. So we've been around, um, we've, we've created civilizations, but there was a war going on in Africa. And you know, there was 1,200 years of Arab slavery in North Africa. And then the Europeans came and IT is the first place on in the Western hemisphere where the Mahafa for us started, us black people that live in the Western hemisphere. Um, so that's where it started. And then the Taino Arawak um, Meridians that were on the island, they fought them back. They killed them to extension, extinction, about a million people. And then they brought Africans to work their lands. And then 300 years later, we had always been resisting. We did a revolution. It lasted 13 years. And when it was finished, there were 50,000 British dead in our waters. Um, between 30 to 70,000 French. Between, and then of course, the Hispanics. So it was a war. It wasn't a skirmish. We, we, um, and we replaced France. Since that time, the Europeans have been fighting each other. They've been, you know, they're warmongers and they won't let us go. They want to finish Le Clerc's uh, imperative from Napoleon. In 1800, um, Napoleon um, became emperor and he wasn't going to stay and have this, the most powerful, the most lucrative, colony we were the most lucrative colony in the world um we provided between um 40 to 60 percent of the sugar and coffee that europe um, used um, our lifespan our ancestors lifespan was between three to six years they worked us to death and then just replaced us so they thought they were just going to replace us so napoleon came and um my ancestors uh, led by Jean-Jacques Dessalines, um, the greatest hero to ever live, um, beat him. And um, it's now 220 years later, and we've been fighting so that they don't um, do to us what they did to the natives. Uh, and we took their name, right? Dessalines, when he created this uh, uh, nation, 
he took the name of the indigenous uh, who lived there so that we can always remember and lift them up. Whenever you say IET, you're lifting up um, all that have been killed um, at the hand of these conquistadors and then the French and then the British. So that's what IET is. That's what it means. And um, it's a nation that's different than a republic. So you, you said uh, because, you know, there's going to be some people like the greatest hero that ever lived. Why would he be the greatest hero that ever lived? You know what I mean? So folks who are checking it out, give us a little brief on Jean Jacques Dessalines. Um, and we've had shout out to our great uh, mama, Baina Bello. We've had her on as well. Um, and she laid some things out. I think you all should definitely get her book. Uh, around sheroes of the Haitian Revolution. So definitely tap into that. But for folks who are not familiar with Dessalines, give us a little uh, little, little brief, if you don't mind. Because some folks sure. are going to be like, man, I thought Al Sharpton was the greatest devil is. So, you know, I don't want to... <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to well, insult my yeah. wife. So, you know. <laughs> I'll tell you, he's the greatest hero to ever live. I run the free IT movement. And um, Desalines' ideas are what's at the foundation of what we're pushing, what we're fighting for, what we stand for. He stood for a black ruled independent nation. The general that he was under, the one that um, France kidnapped, which was Toussaint Louverture, and killed um, in France. And then Desalines rose and he got together all the other black generals and then they beat Napoleon, the greatest hero or the greatest general of the Europeans. So that's one, right? Nobody else brought or beat Napoleon. I mean, they keep making movies about Napoleon, but they have never made a movie about the man who beat him all over the right. Caribbean and forced him to leave his dreams of empire in America um, aside, because Napoleon had the dream that he, at that time, they own what you guys know as the Louisiana Purchase, the Louisiana Territory, which um, because of Desalines and what he did, Napoleon was going bankrupt. And so he sold to Jefferson that territory. And that territory um, made America the superpower it is. So bow down. That's Jean-Jacques Dessalines. Of course, you know, he, he wasn't intending to do that. But that shows you just the level of repercussion that his revolution has had. In addition, he wrote to Jefferson and he wrote to publicly to all sea captains of the triangular trade. This, we're talking about 1804. The uh, Black America did not get emancipated until after the Civil War, during this, or during the Civil War, 1861. So that's 61 years, right? We started 1791, right? We freed ourselves. Um, and then it became official in 1804. But here you have when the one of the first acts of Jean-Jacques Dessalines, the greatest hero to ever live, was to say to all slaveholders, I will take your cargo and I will pay for them. And when they set their foot on the land of IAT that I rule, they will be free and a citizen. That, of course, scared the bejeebies out of the Southern planters who expected black people to toil for them until kingdom come. Yeah. And that's why they, you don't study Jean-Jacques Dessalines. Also, uh, he, you know, there were women in the army. Um, I'm gonna tell you about the woman who raised him. But before I wanna do that, let me tell you about how he was, um, uh, uh, he helped set the pattern so that we freed five Latin American countries from slavery. 
mm-hmm. Latin America, right? Um, Colombia, Venezuela, Ecuador, Bolivia. Yes, that was the work of Jean-Jacques Dessalines. It, 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 it was continued by, by Petro in the South after he killed Dessalines. But the point is that because Dessalines succeeded at the Battle of Vecher, um, the idea that white people are superior got its biggest blow mm-hmm. ever. Because since forever, you know, they've been doing divide and conquer on the on the Gold Coast of Africa um, to 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 have us constantly in crisis like they're doing today with colonialism. So that's why he's the greatest hero to ever live, because what he did inspired revolutions all over the planet, not just white. It inspired, for instance, the Greeks to try to take to 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 declare independence from the Ottoman Empire. And the Greek royalty came to IIT to thank our presidents for the help that we sent. I think we sent coffee and um, uh, uh, resources for them to to have to, to make into money so that they can buy ammunition. We also, of course, you know, if you all know anything about the the various um, America, uh, United States uh, rebellions, like Charles DeLong, he was Haitian, came from IT. Nat Turner, when he was um, caught and on trial, and the judge asked him. You know who 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 else is with you? Who's your who's your leader? And he said Jean Jacques Dessalines. And um, the judge says, "Find me that Negro." He was like, oh, "He's long gone." <laughs> wow. So yeah, uh, Dessalines has um, inspired many revolution, many people who are oppressed. They look at what he did. It's you know even Spartacus all the slaves that the Europeans had in their sojourn with slavery. Um, no one ever did this. Now, on the other, in terms of women, Jean-Jacques Dessalines uh, was uh, born um, in slavery and um, in IT. And he, um, I mean, some people say he was born in Africa, but I think the 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 the, the preponderance of the evidence is like he was ve- he was a young ch- he was a young man um, in IT enslaved, and there was a Dahomean warrior from the elite Dahomean uh, 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 army who who was captured and. Put into slavery in Haiti. Her name is Toya, T-O-Y-A. And uh, she was on the same plantation as the young Jean-Jacques Dessalines. Uh, she tried to raise an army to fight. And when she saw that that was not possible at that time, she took the children. She was some. She was a healer. A lot of the women that had higher status within the the uh, the slave system were healers because they were they were working the the their cargo their property their uh, uh, their uh, their enslaved people to death and so each little plantation had a small clinic and at some point she stopped working in the fields and was more valuable to the master inside that hospital year, uh, um, uh, uh, little hospital. And then she had, um, at, there was something called the third shift. So the first shift would be the hard labor, cutting the sugar cane and so on. And then they had the, the, the people that work at night to do the processing and so on. And then they had the, um, the children who would go out into the fields one, once the, the the laborers had left to pick up all the cuttings. And she was supervising the children after she did her shift at the hospital, at the little clinic. There, she took her spear 
or she created a spear out of the um, the, the Sith, right? You know the thing with the with the half yeah, circle. Yeah. Mm -hmm. She created a, a yes. Yeah, yeah. She created a a, a spear a, a a spear out of it, and then she would surreptitiously teach the children how to fight the way she had fought for for years in Dahomey. Yeah. Mm. So Desaline was one of her best students. He became the liberator. And when he became the liberator, she um, she never wore a European um, uniform during the war. During the war, the Maroons, she was a Maroon later on in life. And um, after she raised Desaline and some of the some of the warriors that fought in the Haitian Revolution were taught not only by the Dahomeyan warriors who had been fighting in Africa and then got to IET, but also the Congo, Congo warriors and the, 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 the Oyos and the um, Mandinkas and all of those, uh, everybody got together as one to fight back. They were no longer fighting each other uh, because of the division that were being intensified uh, by the, by the European and in, in the, on the, on the Gold Coast. So, Ta she he called her his aunt, and I think the children call her Tant Toya. Um, there's a there's a there's a, a famous story about how when Desaline um, uh, declared independence, he built a great castle for his wife uh, Felicite Bonheur, and when um, Toya was hurt in battle, and so she she came to live with him. And she was living with uh, in his house, in his palace. He gave her a title. She she was because he he created he created um, the empire of IT, and he became um, emperor Jean Jacques de Salim. Right? He didn't want to do a republic. So, an empire of liberty has more than a territorial space because he wanted it to, 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 to be a space where all anyone who is fleeing injustice or tyranny, they would have a place in IET because he said all Haitians are going to be known by the Appalachian Black. So even the hundred or so Germans and Polish who fought on the side of the African warriors who came with the Leclerc army um, because you know Napoleon was rampaging through Europe, and he would he would um, conquer, let's say Poland and so on, and then he would conscript their soldiers to go fight his wars in the Americas. So, but then when they got to IET, they were like, "Why are we fighting them? They're fighting for their freedom like we were." Those folks, when IET liberated itself, he put in his constitution that. Um, All Aisian are black, including the whites who fought for liberty. So that's mm. the different and ideology. He was a thinker. He wanted he wanted to include everybody under this black nation, and so he he gave the Appalachian black, which is an ancient an ancient ancient uh, reward, an ancient. Uh, 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 um, so that if if you're because if you look at it right, the ancients black was something that was venerated, right? Kenneth Ke Kemet means black. Okay. Ethiopia means black. Sudan means black. Washita means black. So he 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 was raised by you know warriors warriors who knew their story. Samurai, for instance, means black. So the European who was, you know, steady trying to, just like the right now, they're trying to take the word revolutionary and associating it with petty criminals like, you know, Jimmy Shea's Jay Barbecue. He flipped it on the European, took back the indigenous um, uh, 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 association of black with greatness 
and civilization and warriorship and gave it even to the whites who fought. So that for, for, for Aïtien, black means warriorship. And, and so it, it, all, it didn't just have a racial connotation. It was also about character. Even to this day, because of this Aline's thinking that you'll never know, because you know the Europeans never going to explain it to you because they want to bury us and, and and marginalize it. You have this ideology that black goes back to warriorship, to original civilization, and if even if you're white, in terms of um, um, biologically Caucasian, if you stood for if your character stood for uh, warriorship and against slavery and rape and murder, then you are black. So, so this Aline wasn't just a, a statesperson, an emperor, a general unmatched who beat the greatest general of the Europeans, uh, beat the British, the French, the Spanish, uh, liberated and inspired liberation of millions upon the millions of people. Um, also, like I said, he was specifically trained by uh, uh, the Congo warriors and the Dahomean warriors and specifically Tantoya. And when he created Aichi and he created the, the, the empire, he gave her the... Um, he made her a duchess. He gave her a title. She and when she was dying from some of her injuries, you know, he was besides himself. And the first national funeral in IET was for Tamtoya. Uh, that's that's serious. Um, that is a uh, it's a heavy story. Um, I'm writing that I wanna, story. Yeah, I, I want to ask you because I mean, you know I'm, you know I'm with you know everything that that he was talking about on that level. I want to know, um, do you right now? Do you still hold that same regard as far as um, you know the European fighting on behalf of what's right? Would you consider them black or or you know what what what's your take? Do on I? That? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I know that people are. Uh, yeah. Well, I haven't, I haven't met any yet. You okay. know, uh, I, I don't. I, I've never met any. Um, right now, are the bane of our existence are the white folks. This Aline mm -hmm. had said that his name is going to be, you know, uh, 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 reviled by them. Mm -hmm. They are only going to say his name in order to curse him, and he was right. They do. They only curse his name. They'll tell you about Toussaint Louverture, right? Because Toussaint Louverture kind of loved the French and was a little bit more, you know, Catholic and Eurocentric. The Saline was, he is the only warrior of the Haitian Revolution that became a loi. Um, Esli Dantog, the archetype that I'm named after, is a loi. She's an irreducible essence of all that is of a woman warrior energy beauty and um, femininity, what, what is female. Desaline is the essence of what is male and warriorship and, 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 and protector and liberator, um, the blacksmith. So he, he is the only one who, he's now become synonymous with Ogu. Okay. And I see if you celebrate Ogu, you're celebrating Jean-Jacques Dessalines. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Right. Right. That, that, had, did not, that did not happen for any of the other warriors. Mm. So okay. Dessalines is very unique. He ascended because what happens to us in our, in our ancestor uh, spirituality is that if you represent an energy that is universal, that is very strong in your lineage as a black person, 
when you pass, that energy gets multiplied and 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 will will. So his he be he actually became Ogu. Mm -hmm. Today I see a lot of people talking about Ogu Ogu Ogu, but they don't even know how to make a weapon. Hmm. If you're Ogu, you have to look. You, you, Ogu is the blacksmith. He is the one. You know, we were we were the first people to use iron, and that was Ogu. And we have we have forgotten that because you know the first thing their education tells us is you know all kinds of other things that have nothing to do with how you survive. Right. But Ogu has when I go to. Uh, a pair still and someone tells me there's ogu i said where's your where's your melting where's your iron works right so that's what it is you know like i they, uh, um Ezili protects children and yeah. weak the, the those that are weak for instance right so when the un left near, between 500,000 to a million babies after 13 year minister, the minister mission that came in in 2004 and left around 2017, right? I tried to sue the UN on behalf of the children that were left without support, financial support, parental support, right? I, I did the only case that, the first case that's ever been um, tried um, against a pedophile, hmm. a white guy named Douglas Perlitz who passed himself off as a charity worker and was daily abusing little boys in an orphanage up in the north, right? We helped put him in jail for 20 years. That's what Ezili does. She protects children. Right on. Right on. So just like what, um, you know, Ogu does, right? So we're looking for Ogu. So what you see out in the streets is nothing to do with Ogu because right. If you hurt this, Alin actually um, is the only black man I know who wrote a constitution where he defined what a black man is. Hmm. Yes, look it up. It's you can find it on uh, um, online. Just look up the 1805 Haiti Constitution. Okay. Yeah. So he defined a black man as a good husband, a good son, a good father, and above all, a good soldier. Imagine if our community took that to heart. That's a serious oath right there. That alone, you know, I have the uh, proclamation behind me now. Um, I want to... Um, because yes. are it, you beginning to see the greatest hero who ever lived? I'm seeing. <laughs> <laughs> so so we know I'm not French, but anyway, uh <laughs> we definitely know that. Nowhere oh near. I Nowhere actually just near. noticed that. Liberty, liberty or death. Yeah, that's what Amen. he said. Yeah, yes. it's the same the US out here. So you know, we we clear. So yeah, so when you see yeah. these 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 petty criminals. Who are burning mm -hmm. the houses of people who don't have anything? They couldn't be part of anything of what Desaline put together. Right. They're that they're not good fathers, good sons, good husbands. They're raping people. Right. They're they're, they're part of the state at this point. They um, are CIA assets, and it's a script. It's a psyop going on, but they do have two white men, Dan Cohen and Kim Eyes, who are running around getting these men uh, media exposure hmm. and saying these are revolutionaries trying to free IET from the imperialists. <laughs> wow. Wow. Yeah. So, boy, they, they'll flip it any way they can and have mm -hmm. us regurgitating it. You, you, you exactly. mentioned you mentioned the, uh, the minister mission, right? And um, I know that um, that was uh, part of the whole uh, 2004 coup d'etat that was um, orchestrated by the U.S., uh, Canada, uh, France, I believe. Um, and this was, yeah. um, you know, to 
to pretty much um, oust the Democratic uh, elected leader at that particular time. Can you talk about that? Because we're talking about, I can't believe it's been 20 years. I remember it was going down. And, you know, here we are, 2024. And really, to be honest with you, you could kind of take a newspaper from 20, from 20, 2004 and two, 2024, and you damn near wouldn't know the difference when it comes to what's going on here now. Exactly. You know, so Except themselves saying Guy Philippe is a freedom fighter. And today they're saying it's barbecue. That's it. Right. No difference. Right. Right. So, you know, make that correlation. Like, like how does that connection, you know, work? Because that's, if I'm not mistaken, that's the same year that the core group came into existence as well. That's right. So, um, we got we took our independence fought for our independence and 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 won it in 1804 so 200 years later is 2004 right and they did not want a democratically elected president at the helm right because then that would mean you know we're successfully moving forward sure they needed to knock us back out to to what you see now a wasteland so sometime in December, I believe, 2003, there was a meeting. It was called the Ottawa Initiative Meeting, and it was a meeting of um, uh, ambassadors and foreign ministers, white ambassadors and foreign ministers. No Haitian was there. And they decided to, to th these ambassadors, uh, they, that the IET was going to have a population of 20 million in 2019 and they said that that was a bomb waiting to happen you must understand that even after um the occupation that they occupied us from 2004 to 2017 and continue to occupy us in a different form they just not in that uniform anymore um they the the united states rules have been ruling IET since 2004. We keep fighting back. I've been doing free IET since the day they put their boots on our land in 2004, because that called up Esli Dantal. As you know, I was doing you know entertainment law so far away from this, but they call up my archetype. And, I didn't want to really spend my life doing this, but um, that's how it ended up. So 20 years later, so I started free IET the day they put their boots on IET and hmm. essentially um, deported. <laughs> they deported, just like they deported um, Toussaint from IET, mm -hmm. France, mm -hmm. they deported Aristide at, to the Central African Republic. And then they put in, and they said that Guy Philippe, um, this was a, a former policeman. They always used former policemen. Remember Toto Constant, former policeman, uh, a, a military that they, 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 they train, and then Guy, Guy Philippe, former po uh, policeman, and now Barbecue is a former policeman. So these are all their, ass they're all their assets. Right. They just give them different scripts at different right. times. So in 2004, they told you they had the, the same interviews you see now they're doing to um, barbecue. They used to do with Guy Philippe and Wolf Blitzer and those people at CNN used to call him a freedom fighter. Come to save the the the, the Aïtien from Aristide, the dictator. That's right. how they sold it then. Okay. And the 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 Ottawa unit the the core group, the group of filthy scum jackals who call themselves ambassadors. And I'm actually quoting the first historian of IET. He said this in 1804. Uh, I'd like uh, every man to know who Jean Jacques Dessalines is, but I also like you to know this mulatto. His name is Boisant Tonnerre, and he was the secretary of Jean-Jacques Dessalines. Mm -hmm. And uh, 
He wrote the first history of IT, published in 1804. When De Saline was uh, killed by the mulatto Patreon, who's very Eurocentric, Boisantonel wasn't. Boisantonel thought the the you know the French were scums. Um, and 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 he writes in his book. It's called um, Memory for the History of IT. This is a man who was the secretary of the greatest hero who ever lived, who traveled with him on his campaigns. And he wrote a book and all the academics made as if it doesn't exist. Wow. You can actually find it online. It's, on, it's in French, but there is one young brother on YouTube. You can just put his name, Braun Tonnerre. Um, he reads it in English. But let me let me just say to you that the way he begins, he says, before retracing the scenes of horror executed by the French, you know, by these by these generals and 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 French prefects and French governors that the you know the various uh, 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 governments in France would send to IET. Um, he says, like, these people were monsters and tyrants, evil assassins. I, this is the beginning of his book. I just read that to you. He hmm. was raw with it, right? So he told you exactly who they are. And I'm telling you right now, this is who they are today. Their descendants, the, 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 the six nations who have come together at the level of partitioning IET is U.S. led. So it's the United States, France, Canada, Germany, Spain, Brazil. And then they have three representatives from their World War II Bretton Woods organizations, the OAS, the, 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 the UN and the European Union. So this is what they call the core group. So it consists of the entire Western enslaver group of people. We know who the Brazilians were, right? We know how they treat in the favelas, they're black people, right? They're part mm -hmm. of the core group, right? We know the Spaniards first were the conquistadors that got to IET first and they are in the form of the Dominican Republic right now on our borders. They are part of the core group, right? If you don't see Britain in there, it's because you're not looking at Canada. Canada is both France and Britain. That's right. You understand? So all of the enemies of humanity that were um, beaten by the warriors male and female and children, if family went to war, um, have come back. And they came back 200 years later in 2004 doing our bicentennial when we had a first democratically elected president. Um, and France, for the first time, put their boots on Haitian soil. And that was 2004. And now it's 20 years later. In the meanwhile, Right before that, you had 30 years of US sponsored dictatorship with Duvalier. And before that, you know, we were coming off of 19 years um, of, of, of US occupation where Southern Marines went into IET and literally put the Haitians in, 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 back into slavery right? Doing chain gang work, trying to get them to, to do plantations and Haitians refused to do plantation work. So what they did do, they shipped them to Cuba and to Dominican Republic. That's how that happened because the Haitians won't do that in, in IT. So, and of course, you know, as you know, um, when we got our independence, France the United States, all of them got together and France kept trying to come back. And the only way they recognize our independence is that we had to pay reparation to all the former slavers. 
So for a hundred, for one century, more than one century, that Haitian had to pay everything they had to stop France from coming back. And then 200 years later, they come back. And then yesterday at the White House, the, 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 the demon rats had a meeting with some Haitian elites and they want Biden to come back in another mission that they called um, uh, some call a mission for security of IET. And it's laughable that after all we have suffered at the hands of the European, that any black person would actually think that they would help save black lives. Like, I don't know what planet they're living on. So that's kind of um, where we are. Um, you know, that 122 years of paying France back, we, we did that until 19, from 1825 to, 19, to 1915 when the United States, because of the Monroe Doctrine, came into Haiti itself as an occupier took over the debt, but the Citibank boys were created. Citibank was created from taking over the debt and then having the Marines cart out Haiti's gold reserve. And to this day, Haiti's gold reserve is the property of Citibank in the United States. It's bananas. I mean, just sitting here listening to you talk about, and of course, we, we've heard it before, but, you know, just a reminder, you have Africans here talking about fighting for reparations. And then you have, <laughs> you have Haitians uh, who are the descendants of freedom fighters forced to pay their enslavers reparations for sticking their foot part of my english up their ass for stomping them out or for cutting their heads off and burning the houses down you know what i mean so they want i mean you came up in my this the, the arrogance of, of the european you come up in my house i serve you i give you what you came for and then all of a sudden i owe you for we're fucking you up. Yeah. 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 So I owe you for that. <laughs> They're amazing. Well, I'm, I'm telling you, man, it's, it's like it's more than that because now they want to come. Now they want the land. The land we pay for in right. black blood. Right. 300 years of slavery. 300 years of slavery we had. Then and the world's got an uproar. Yes. And then we did 13 year war where we had, we started out with 500,000 Africans in 1791. By 1804, in that war, honor to all those ancestors that I'm talking about, half of them had died, had been killed. Right. right. 250,000. So we paid 300 years of slavery, 250,000 lives during the revolution. Then they forced us to pay reparation for losing my grand grand as property right. for 122 years then in 2000 during our bicentennial they all came back and made a sort of right. like berlin conference agreement with each right. other to divvy us up and that's what we're fighting and we fought hard alone for this last 20 years to stop and get rid of uh, 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 the UN who left us, some people say between 500,000, definitely 500,000, but some people go as high as a million children raped mothers. They left. They left us with cholera that we never had that killed 30,000 Haitians and one to three million sick. And every time there's a rainy season, we 
we get cholera again because it's in our system. They never fixed it. The UN. Right, right. So, and now mm -hmm. they want to return. And then they have these Negroes speaking because what? They created this, this narrative of gangs on the streets of Port-au-Prince. Now, remember, there are 13 million Haitians. Some people say 11 million. Some people say 12 million. I go with 13 million. There are 13 million Haitians in IET. Port-au-Prince, where they say the gangs are, that's where the core group is. Right. Okay? It, it's always where they are. Right. Outside. Yes. Where the core group is. And it, it's because we it, that space is, if you look at the Gulf of Port-au-Prince, the head of our oil is there and the U.S. wants to depopulate that place in Port-au-Prince. That's why they created these gangs. Arm them. I'm not saying it. Don't The, the U.N. has a report out there. If you guys want to learn anything, go to my website. I, I've, I've laid it all out. The U.N. has a report that said that the guns that are being used by the men with U.S. arms, because they're U.S. are U.S. arms from Florida, from U.S. spaces. And there's a resolution actually at the U.N. I think it's 2653 that says that the resolution says that it, 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 it wants all of its member state to stop trafficking arms to IET. We don't, we don't manufacture arms. So if it's in their hands, somebody's putting it in their hands and they actually know. And I can tell you who is arming barbecue, who is arming all, all these, 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 these men. It's the Syrian, Lebanese, Israeli oligarchs who own 98% of the Haitian local economy. Hmm. Here are the ones that have been sanctioned. You guys can find it. Go look for it because you're not going to see it in this theater of salaciousness that they keep putting out in front of you with barbecue. Oh, we eat people. He barbecues them. His name is barbecue because his mother was a street vendor who sold barbecue. Yeah. <laughs> He's going but, there. They're amazing. Uh, this is this is what they this is what these white people need in order to sleep well, I guess. Who knows? I don't know. Okay, they, these media uh folks, right? So um that's 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 where we are, right? Um there's much resources in the the Gulf of Port-au-Prince and Lagunav. And America's already there, people, okay? This is like, they're just like trying to cover themselves up with a cover and have these Al Sharpton and Eric Adams and uh, uh, there's a few Haitians involved too, like, Ron, and then there's Ron Daniels, of course, you know, that little snake um, has been doing things against, you know, black liberation since I came into the, to, to, to know who he was. They're all running around with the demon rats, running around trying to find a, a way to come into IET to do the same crap that they've been doing for the last 20 years, which is kill us, which is privatize public assets to the wealthy. So take so the electricity company, the, 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 all the companies and privatize it to these business people. There's no services that the government is supposed to give to the people, right? And then they bring the NGOs who bring, you know, toxic lead-filled rice to the Haitian people along with the guns that they have in those bags for the right. oligarchs or for their, so that's, that's what's going on in IET. We don't make those guns, we don't manufacture them. And I know those men, starving as they are, did not have no five to eight thousand dollars to buy one. Right. You know, I'm 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 listening to you, and you know, going back to you talked about how they have all these former cops in leadership, and then you see uh, New York's finest former cop Eric Adams and wire wearing Al. And, and these other Negroes 
talking about our Haitian brothers and sisters need our help. You understand what I'm saying? Talking about, um, you know, repeating the, um, repeating the line from uh, the, the state narrative, you know, uh, yeah. the gangs are overrunning it. Um, you know, it's a failed state, you know, uh, you know, they, they need us because look at what they're doing to, it's the same old bullshit that these Europeans talk about freeing the savages on the continent of Africa. They never change their script. The names change. And the the, the never, game remains the same. Ever, ever. Yeah, That's what Napoleon yeah. wrote to the slaves when he came to exterminate them. He wrote a letter to the the, the slaves, and he says, you know, don't fight. Um, the 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 um, troops, the Leclerc troops, are here to protect you against your foreign enemies. Okay, today they want to come and protect us against the gangs that they created and armed. Like that, right? Right. Let's talk about some of the uh, the folks who are responsible for the arming of these mm -hmm. these 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 gangs. You know what I'm saying? Because we know there's folks like uh, you know Martelli and Gilbert Biggio and, and folks like that. Let, let's talk about who they are and their role. Because I think the thing is, oftentimes we let these fools get away without naming, you know, exactly who they are. You know, and I, I recall you was talking a little while ago. You talked about some of the countries that um, some of the nations that Dessalines helped to liberate and a few of those have turned their back and they've become, you know, mercenaries and, and allies to, uh, you know, to the U.S., to France, you know, to the core group, so on and so forth. But let's talk about some of these financiers, you know, because folks are, again, they're confused. They think, you know, just like the so-called quote unquote gangs in L.A., and in Chicago, it's always someone arming. There's always an underlying uh, factor that we don't see. We just see the whole black on black violence. You know what I'm saying? But we know that whenever there's some black on black, quote unquote, black on black violence, there's some European fingerprints somewhere in the midst. So who are some of these people and, and what is their role in the destruction of, of, of this nation? All right, so I'll tell you their names. The uh, the Canada has sanctioned um, these economic elites. These people own banks in IET. Um, their names are Carl Braun, Marc Antoine Acre, Jean Marie Vaube, Gilbert Bijo, Matéli. Um, so th so there's levels of economic. Um, uh, uh, riches of, with these people, you know, so you have, um, they freeze, supposedly they're frozen their assets, but we know nothing about that. Um, nobody's telling us where it is so we can, you know, put a lien on it for the people that are dead. So it's all a charade. Um, but where, where did these people come from? Um, I like to tell that story because um, it's not told by the academics and it's definitely not told by the newspaper who doesn't tell you that they exist. Um, they'll not tell you who brought those guns for the men that's on the streets right now killing innocent Haitians and depopulating that area. Remember, the United States says that it needs to depopulate IET, okay. right? So it wants it wants to keep, and we make sixty percent. We are sixty percent of the Caricom population. Caricom is a regional organization of Caribbean nations. That um, there's there's fifteen of it, including IAT. But in all the fifteen, right, our population is sixty percent of their population, right? Jamaica, you know, last time I looked, I something like maybe three million. So we have, you know, so much more, um, but homes and Mia Motley, you know, Barbados, I guess, um, you know, uh, they are now the overseers being given the task of putting a Haitian transitional government together. And the wild part is the condition for they, they said that they they just tell us this right because we're, we're we're children you know we're gonna be ruled by 
anyone the United States says to rule us, right? And right now they're really searching for the step and fetch it blackface. Hmm. Okay. So they've gone to William Ruto of Kenya. And so they say Kenya is going to bring a thousand troops. And then of course, you know, all these other Negroes um, who have more violence, right? Jamaica, you don't see, you don't see them showing you all the violence of Jamaica every day right. for the last 20 years, right? It killed 3000 people like a month. Like, yeah, but that's no problem. yeah, that's no problem. You know yeah. why? Because they own Jamaica and they're living in Wakanda in Jamaica behind their gates with their own security and outside that people just wow 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 west trying to survive you know they just go there to find you know young men and sleep with them that's what these hags do hmm. so this is where we are well those hags are the ones that are u.s ambassadors creating these gangs if you guys go to my Zilidlo, uh, not Zilidlo, Zilidlo is, is a water project that I, I have in IET for, for clean water, solar power. But I have a, um, it's Zilidanto at Instagram without the E, just Zilidanto. You you see, you know, I, I used to write a lot, but people don't read. So, you know, I, I just don't write. I just do these small, hopefully that would be better. Um, videos and 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 pictures and i put them on instagram and so i i have one so that's really what what's kind of going on 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 the streets you have the the united states wants to depopulate it because of all the riches we have and because of the strategic position um and the template is the same from slavery right they've got their overseers who they substituted for the haitian um, mulattoes that were like the patrons in the boys, the one that killed this Aline back in 1806, right? And that agreed to the reparation to their parents in France. Um, so what, what you have is the, um, the, the, the Mundele, the stranger, the colonist, then the black collaborator, and then the, 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 the people who are enslaved. During the end of the Ottoman Empire, France and Britain got together in a secret treaty called Site Pico, where they divided the Middle East. And France got Syria and Lebanon. France is a Catholic nation. The minorities that were not Muslim in this Ottoman Empire, they're the ones that are now the, the, the Frenchmen in IET. They call them Arabs to try to make as if they're not French. Right. You guys getting me? So absolutely, when you see, yes. when you see uh, um, uh, uh, Gilbert Bijo from Aleppo, right? His family wasn't Muslim. They were Catholic. The United States and France got together and knows that if you saw a Frenchman coming to IET to control 98% of the economics, Africans would like stand up like what? But these Arabs, who you're not really sure if they're black or not, they come in and the and the, the same way the United States does use immigrants against black people in America, right? They came in and they get, just like they do for the Koreans and the Chinese and the others, they gave them financial support until they were able to move up and get rid of the mulatto elites and the black elites. So right now the elites in IT are Syrian, Lebanese, and those guys, right? And they're Christian, Catholics. There's one who's Israeli, his name is Gilbert Bijo. So they're Middle Eastern operatives. 
the way U.S. runs his hegemony is it will take one family member in, as a general trained to fight in their wars in the Middle East. And then they'll give the younger brother and the wives of these people a place to live in IT or Honduras or Jamaica or Sierra Leone. Go to any of these countries, ask who are their presidents. Yes. Lebanese, Syrian, right? Just look at Jamaica or the Dominican Republic, Abinader, Lebanese. Look at wow. Sierra Leone, Syrian. So they put all those buffer races ahead of us. And then they use them as the new worldwide overseers. That's who they are. Gilbert, these guys, right? These Middle Eastern people. And I mean, they're captured also because yeah. they get they get to they get might get to have the younger brother go to Colombia because the United States gives them visas and grants and access to Harvard and so on. But another brother is going to be the CIA handler doing the brother of for the for the for the Muslim, you know. That's how they run their stuff. Right. You understand? Indeed. That's why you see a lot of South Koreans in black neighborhoods. Right? Because the United States is in a fight with North Korea. Hmm. So a lot of these folks are, are families of um, folks who worked with the CIA. You know That's what I mean? right. Uh, folks and and been, generals who are high up yeah. in levels, right? And the way the United States does it is that it, it uses our nations, our Caribbean nations, Jamaica, all of them, as drug spaces. So yeah. all of these people control. So they've taken every symbol of nationhood from us, right? Right. Because the custom is controlled by these people. The the everything is controlled by them. So Colombia, for instance, is where all that. The United States, you know, the the young guy in Baltimore it doesn't know where the where the cocaine is coming from, but it's coming from right. Colombia, right? The United States control that. And then they ship it through the the ships of these oligarchs that they allow to have ship shipping access. And then it ends up in Baltimore. And yeah. then they feed my children to the prison industrial complex and they make money on three sides and the money they make, they use the percentage, uh, a big percentage of it to fight their wars in um, the Middle East. Serious assembly line. They have it going. Uh, assembly line. Assembly we, need line. we need to wake up. Hey, well, I mean, that, that's a whole nother story for a different day. Um, we know that you are you have a lawsuit. You suing the block, the U.S. Uh, U.S. backed deployment of Kenyan troops in Haiti. That's the word on the street. Let's talk about that. That's that's a pretty pretty bold and brave move. Talk about you know. So so I, I've what, never what? even seen that. I gotta write it down. <laughs> Yeah, same, I thought we, I, I did I didn't um, thank you. I didn't even I, I kept telling people I haven't seen one newspaper. Where this, is this that is, one coming this from? This the Jackson Advocate Online dot com. Oh, okay. This one, this one came out December fourth uh of last year. Okay, fact, okay. Yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah, so. yes, yes, yes. So yes, we, we do I do have a, a case. So while the integrated Negroes are running around trying to get um, another occupation because I'm that lawyer that spends her whole life trying to represent and defend people who have no defense. I do what I can. And so um, we don't, obviously we don't want another occupation of any, of any form. So Ayel Henri, who is the prime minister of IT, illegal, unpopular, 
and put into office by a tweet hmm. by a white woman named Ellen Lalume. And, you know, it's like, it's like, right? So she just said a, a tweet. Wow. She put him in office. Okay. Is that like an absentee vote? That, that's the new absentee I, vote? You just... I, it's the new absentee vote. And I guess, you know, he's representing them because right now he's in California somewhere and no Haitian know where he is. Who right. knows what he's signing, right? And the, 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 the script is that he can't come to IAT because the gangs are in the streets. Hmm. You understand? So the U.S. controls both both the illegal, unpopular, not put in by any Haitian prime minister who somewhere being protected somewhere, they tell me, in California or Puerto Rico by special services. And then they control the men on the streets killing my people and then creating this crisis so that the assimilated Negroes can go to Biden and say, please go help those Haitians. Oh, those visuals look a mess. Right. So it's manufactured consent for the U.S. occupation, right? Um, I filed a case when, um, you know, earlier, late 2023. Um, at that time, I was helping the lawyers in Kenya who also filed a case hmm. against the Kenyan government with the same allegations. Our allegation is that, um, well, my our allegation is that, that, that the UN resolution authorizing this mission is unconstitutional according to Haitian law. And we say that in this lawsuit, I say, that um, Ariel Henry is illegal and has no legal authority to say anything in our name, much less bring in a foreign invasion troops. He can't sign anything. And, and you could see he went to Kenya to sign some bilateral agreement and then supposedly he can't come back. <laughs> but guess what the United States, <laughs> okay, so, so it's like my case was proven, right? right? But guess what the United States did? It then gathered together some step and fetched CARICOM Negroes. Hmm. Okay, to say, hey, out of the blue, nobody talks to us. They're going to put together a seven head transitional government. But guess hmm. what? The first condition is if you want to be part of this seven head transitional government, you must first agree to Kenyan troops coming to IET. <laughs> wow. I mean, uh, when when I, I heard, words. give me some words, please. I mean, when I heard, I mean, because Kenya was talking about sending a thousand troops. Is that correct? Yes, I think it was a thousand troops, a thousand troops to Haiti to help fight gang violence. I mean, <laughs> you know, if. I, I, I couldn't imagine the U.S. allowing any, quote unquote, African forces onto their streets or to talk about. Now, now they, they send Israelis here all the time. Of course, I'm in Atlanta. So you have Gilly, the um, Georgia International Law uh, uh, Enforcement Exchange, you know, which is an exchange between um Israel and the U.S., which has been going on here for about 31 years. So they actually train troops right here in Georgia. Um, uh, NYPD has a, a headquarter in, um, I believe, in in, uh, in Tel Aviv. Um, and and it, it's just like, so we're used to that type of exchange. But you can never, there would never be, I, I wish a Kenyan would. <laughs> Come what to America. European say. Exactly. I mean, first of all, just you even getting here. And I, I want to point out, too, because I hear a lot of Africans in the, in the United States that talk about immigrants. Right now, when you study what's going on with ICE, these quote unquote immigrant detention centers, these are mainly Haitians that are being deported. Mm -hmm. You know, 
a lot of folks think that, you know, oh, they're Mexican or they're from this place, whatever, so on and so forth. When they talk about this deportation situation, the majority of these folks are Haitians who are being held um, in these camps, you know, which they're, they're waiting to ship back or, or, or to uh, deport more or less. I'm amazed when I heard the whole thing about Kenya and Jamaica, it, it really, it showed you, shows us the insanity of the Negro worldwide. You know what I'm saying? It's like you have, when you talk about Kenya, again, it's like this logo that you see at the bottom of the thing, it's the Siafu ant. It comes from Kenya. You know what I mean? We we revere folks like um, Dana Kamathi and the, 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 uh, the Land and Freedom uh, Army, you know, which they call the Mile Mile. All of these freedom fighters that come up out of Kenya and you have the audacity to side. I mean, the Kenyans kick the British ass. You know what I mean? And you have the audacity to side with them and with the French and with the U.S. and so on and so forth to go against your brothers and sisters. You know, I mean, it's it's insanity on a whole nother level. Like you said about Jamaica, it was like I thought I was reading and hearing things because I couldn't imagine. Jamaica's going to come to help us with our gangs. I mean, that, that right there is like, I mean, I mean, I mean uh, you know, it, I, I don't know if your audience understands what that means. I mean, listen. There's a state of emergency right now in Jamaica because of their gangs. But you're not right. going to see that no. on CNN. Of course not. Because they own the land and own the tourism. Right. And when you say they, who is they? It's not the Jamaicans. It's not, not, it's not the, the Jamaicans. Who owns Jamaica? No. Of course. So, <laughs> so you know. Somewhere. Didn't they just have the king over there? <laughs> Oh my goodness. Their, their oh. highest court is in is in, in um, the highest Jamaican court is in in still in England. Wow, wow! You understand? You know, so, it, it, so, but let me it, let me tell you how. Oh, you know, I, I uh, before I tell you, let me let me read some because I I said you know if I get stuck, I'm gonna read some Brown Tonier because Brown Tonier, um, he helps me get through this sometimes. You know, I, I see you drinking the water. You might need some rum. I don't know. I know, I know, right? <laughs> get, get the dark rum. Go he's by the like, altar. You know. I know, right? I know, right? So he's like, um, these bunch of filth, known by the titles of ambassadors. That's how I'm going to call them, right? Right. Hmm. He says, you know, we are the targets of all tyrants, intriguers, and violent scums of Europe. Okay, now that I got that little courage, let me tell you about. <laughs> let me tell you about the Kenyan thing. There was, there was a one. You, you should have read that in the beginning. That's a wonderful. <laughs> way to, <laughs> I just had it's, to do it. I just had to. Highly it. accurate. You know, yes. you know, he helped me get through because you've got to trace all their perfidy, all of their lies. You understand? Audacity. Right. The audacity, right? So, so. The violence rate in, in Jamaica has been going on and pe black people have been killing black people for 30 years. Right. No media blitz is going on about that at all. So there's no. a reason why they're doing the media blitz in IET. And so, you know, this whole kind of Kenya thing, like I said, they said, okay, let me give you, this is the thing, right? When you're dealing with the CIA, they can bust your head out because there's they purposely make no sense. And so I learned. Did along you say that one more time? Purposely make no sense. That that is like it's a concerted effort. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's like we're not even going to act like we're going to make sense. We're going to tell you anything. We're just going to tell you what. Yeah, whatever right. come to my mind first, uh, Google right. God. Okay, cool. That's what it is. Right. Okay. And they create the same, um, they give the same name to their gangs. I remember like back in 2004, um, I, 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 at that time I, I was still doing art and I had a, a West African dance troupe and they were trying to get rid of Laurent Bagbo 
and, and my dancers were from the Ivory Coast and so on. And I remember they were talking about this group of gangs that was created by the CIA called Samama, without mothers. And then all of a sudden I'm in IET and I hear there's a group, <laughs> it's like the same CIA guy went from one to the other and created the same and gave it the same name. Yeah, like they so they had Samama in IET. Wow. And I was just, I was like, wow, they don't care. They don't. Why should they? They really don't care because our people are so helpless and so ridiculous. So let me tell you, I mean, this makes no sense. And I'm sorry to mess up your mind, but hey, listen to me. While they have these, I don't know what they call them, okay? You media people talking about, Oh, what's going in IT? We got to go help our brothers. I'm like, where have you been the last 30 years as I was fighting? Right? At least you were here. <laughs> so, <clears throat> all right. The CIA predator, the intelligence folks, they run chaos. They create chaos and then they work through chaos. They create divisions in internal strife. So, and they've been doing it successfully for over 500 years. I mean, it's time we wised up. So at the same time that the United States is saying that it's got this UN sanctioned mission to have Kenya bring a thousand troops to IET, police troops, at the same time it's saying that the United States has something called the Biden program. There are four nations in the Biden program. It's an immigration program. It's Nicaragua, Cuba, Venezuela, and IET. Four places that they don't control yet in the Western hemisphere. Now say them again, Cuba, Venezuela, Nicaragua, IET. Hmm. I remember back in the day, uh, uh, when my mom would like bring some, some relative and have me do their paperwork, you know, the husband was in America legally came through Kennedy airport and now he's working and he's going to send sponsorship papers for his wife. It used to take about five to seven years. That's how long it would take to bring them to bring the wife and the family legally a long time right now under the Biden program, Haitians, Nicaraguans, you guys know, you know what they all have in common besides, okay, so the three of them have Russia in common as an ally. Hmm. I, he's the only one fighting alone with right. nobody, okay? Yeah, yeah, we are the resistance. So, oh, yeah. <laughs> so they put, they, they want the brain drain. They want the, the, they want the, 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 the ICN with some level of, of education out of there. So I'm going to give you two. I can't say mine F. So I, I, I got, you got to give me some words. You, you, you can say that this, this is, this is RSTV. <laughs> I, I, I've cursed a couple of times and I'm used to you cursing in real life. And you've been so mild and everything. And I, I'm feeling bad because folks are like, I can't believe he's cursing in front of her. So you got me feeling like an outlaw right now. No, so no, no, no. You, so you gonna... they, they, they mind F you, right? Okay. So here's the mind F people. So they're saying that, and they went to the UN. And remember, the UN is the most undemocratic institution, right? From, from, world, from world War II, right? It's made up of five... Security Council folks that have veto power, right? Russia, China, United States, England, and, and 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 France, right? They got veto power, which means that they can stop anything that the 194 others want. So, but Russia and China did not stop this resolution to bring in troops from from. Okay, so remember that as as. As the young brothers out there in Nigeria, not Nigeria, Burkina Faso and Mali and so on are, are thinking that maybe Wagner and, and you're, you know, because the cousins, they work together at a certain point in time. They don't want right. Africa released. Anyways, so <clears throat> 
the United States is asking for a thousand, we don't even know why, a thousand troops. Haiti has 10,000 um, police. And supposedly 10,000 police haven't been able to stop these little ridiculous whatever uh, uh, gangs. Right. Okay? Right. Haven't been able to do it for three years since the United States agents killed Jovenel Moise. Right? It was the DEA, FBI. I'm not making it up. So the U.S. creates the problem, and now it wants to fix it with more intervention. Right. right? So they had a illegal, fake election legitimized by the OAS, who's part of the core group. Um, and then Jovenel Moise was declared president. He did his years and then he was he was not supposed to be there when he died. But what happened with him was even the collaborators at some point, they want to do something for their family. So when he realized he he he, he was only working on behalf of the Haitian oligarchs and the core group, he sneaked out and went to Turkey to meet with Russia to try to give because the only way we're ever going to get out of this is if we have a nuclear power because the white man don't understand nothing but the violence. That's it. You so, say that one more time. Yeah. Yeah, the, <laughs> nothing but violence. So 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 he went to Turkey, he met with Russia, he came back with a couple of contracts to provide electricity and some infrastructure for the masses. The United States had two cats and a dog. They were so pissed. Because here it is, they spent all that money creating a president, right? They called him the banana man, and he was supposed to have some banana plantation, which they made up. Right. Okay? Mm -hmm. And he was a money launderer, so they had dossiers on him. They only they only make president black people they have dossiers on. Right. Because they don't run you, right? So within a month after Jovenel Moise came back from Turkey and had um, accepted the Russian ambassador to uh, uh, his appointment as an ambassador in IT. Like we don't have one, right? Mm -hmm. He's killed by the intelligence agencies. And then mm -hmm. the FBI runs to IT to talk to all the suspects and takes a bunch of them to Miami to have a classified, a classified trial. Right. And once how, in a while, we hear how that work. <laughs> how that work. Okay. Amazing. Right. <laughs> All right. So they have their classified trial. Once in a while, they'll tell you that the Colombians who they trained killed Jovenel Moise in his house. And right. the Colombians somehow flew to the Dominican Republic and the United States that has the largest embassy in the Western Hemisphere did not know about it. And these 18 Colombians, okay, um, went into his house and killed him. And who hired these 18 Colombians? A security company in Miami. Right. Tied so, to the FBI. The same security wow. company that tried to take down um, uh, Maduro for Guado. Same one. With a Venezuelan um, uh, 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 CEO. So now we're supposed to think that all of them are in prison. These are CIA agents, DEA agents. I'm not saying it. The New York Times says it. Right, right. So the, the U.S., just look it up, okay? When they went to Jovenel Mouye's house to kill him, the Colombians, right? Remember, the U.S. has the largest embassy in the Western Hemisphere with over 1,000 military right there. And 30 right. minutes, 30 minutes from us, they got another naval base at Guantanamo Bay. And you're going to tell me 18 military foreign is going to land in IET, which they rule, and they don't know about it. Right. That's they, insane. They're gonna, they, they, they're gonna, he's going to go up the mountain in the middle of the night at 1 o'clock, okay, where there's no electricity, right? You got to see the lights. And no U.S. saw it? Right. And kill a, you, they didn't just kill just anyone. I mean, they killed the, the president. They of tortured a, of that the, man. Just right. to let every Haitian know, don't ever try to get yourself in alliance. 
Okay. And since they did that, the, the, the gangs that he used to stop the demonstrations, they, 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 they went private, you know, they started, you know, uh, uh, doing stuff on their own because there was nobody to lead them anymore. So right. that's where we are, right? So now that the U U.S. wants to bring another occupation to fix the problem that it created. And these Negroes don't know a darn thing. And they're sitting there with Biden talking about we're going to help the poor. Thank you. We need no more help. Yeah. I want I want yeah. that I want Biden and Hillary Clinton to give us the 13 billion dollars they collected from the earthquake that nobody knows where it went. How about that? Right? So so they have 10,000 about 10,000 Haitian police. Here's the contradiction people, okay? If you don't remember anything I say, remember these next two things. When they ask you um that you know Haitians need foreign intervention. These are the reasons you're going to say why we don't need foreign intervention. They say they're going to get a thousand Kenyans. We have 10,000 police. So, and the 10,000 police couldn't take care of these people, but the thousand Kenyans can. That's number one. Number right. two, we don't make the guns. The U.S. is the one dumping the guns, and he's making sure the guns go to the gangs and not the police. So right now, the police in IT are outgunned by the weapons that the oligarchs give to the gangs. And guess what? There's an embargo. United States specifically embargoes guns in IT. And right. who... who is it's enforced against the Haitian police. You understand? Like I said, I, I, didn't, I didn't want to ask your minds, but I just want to let you know. But let me give you something even worse. Okay, Thanks. and then I'm done. <laughs> even worse. <laughs> I, 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 that too. Okay? There's this thing right, called right. the Biden program where we, you don't even need to have a passport or go because, you know, nothing is working in IT. So how do you get a passport to come to America? You don't need one. They're going to do it right at the airport for you. They want the people out right at the air. When I was doing this back when I was a young kid, like I said, it would take years right now from application to coming to America, two weeks, two weeks. And I was like, what the? What's going on? And guess what? Inside the Haitian police headquarters, the U.S. put in a Biden program office wow. so that Haitian police can go into exile in IT. And yet they want to bring a thousand. What's going on, people? All right. So wow. did I F up you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, 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 I'm, I'm going to definitely have to take a break on this one. Um, <laughs> it Inside is, the I, police, they have a headquarters so that the police and so far 25% of the police have gone into U S program and come to and left and left IET when we need police. This is wild. This is wild. Um, I also want to point out because you mentioned the, uh, the, uh, 26, um, Venezuelans that um, were involved in this this assassination, and you mentioned that they were trained by a security force right here in Miami, and um, that particular security force is the CTU, CTU mm -hmm. Security, based in Miami, and it's owned by a Venezuelan businessman by the name of Tony Intriago. Right. Um, and how many years did it just gave him? Man, uh, shit. <laughs> yeah, he he's, he's he's supposedly now. Remember, I couldn't go to the trial because it's classified. But they right, they just put right. out in the news that you know he that he got life supposedly. Yeah, we we don't um. I mean, he what he what they meant is he got life on an island somewhere, and he has his feet kicked up, and <laughs> they wait for the next. <laughs> right, I'm, I'm I'm confused as to how you have this uh um. Uh, what, what 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 did you say the trial was a um. A classified. I keep say, yeah, I keep wanting to say mock trial because you know, I mean, we know that it's 
I don't I even mean, think they even who, who's, who's, whose interests are they are they are they oh the Haitian people this, this is super gangster I mean just gangster, how this gangster, whole thing gangster. works what's happening in yeah. IT when when the human when human beings wake up and actually hear what I just told you right and real journalists start looking at this you're going to see how kamikaze gangster and mafia and criminal the u.s right. government is really is without a doubt you gotta love it you gotta love it um listen thank you for uh wrecking my day <laughs> <laughs> I told you I had to read some brown to to get through this. <laughs> yeah, I got I, I got I got to read some brown rum to get through this. But listen, um, definitely as always, I, I got to get you back on here sooner. I, I just saw my timeline the other day. It said I didn't have you on for two years. I don't know what happened. I'm gonna blame myself because I know you will. But um, <laughs> we gotta definitely um, I gotta get a report with you. At least once a month, we gotta have you come through and just. Uh, I, I you know, really appreciate you. I know how long you've yeah. been doing this, so no, so no, no, kudos no. to you. Listen, I mean, Galante. folks like you Staying keep me great. Of course, we we don't have a choice. We have absolutely no choice. This is what it is, um, and there's so many weak cowards amongst us that we're forced to stay the course. Because if not, then we lose. And um, in the mortal words of our man, Desilene, as you can see above my head, it's liberty or death. Liberty or death. That's what it is. And that's liberty all we're here for. I promise you we're going to take care of them. We are the resistance. Man. Listen, coup d'etat. They can do whatever they want to do. Not yes, going to happen. Yes, we We're going to win. We're going to win. We don't have a choice. Um, gratitude again for coming on. Drumming? Drumming on, no. yes, let me tell your audience because your audience will understand. There is a, okay. um, the United States is using sound war right now. And if mm. anybody knows anything about sound and rhythm, it's the black man and I, and yes. the black women. And I'm telling you guys, it's time to take out those drums. So we're going to take out our drums. Um, Professor Small is going to do it with me and we're going to do it all over the world on April 8th doing the total eclipse. Right and here's what those of you who do have drums and you don't even have to have drums. I want you to remember that sound is very important and they're using sound as a, as a, as a, as a nuclear warfare right now. You don't see it, but remember if you feel something, okay, take out your drum, take out something. Um, we're on April 8th. That's the day of the total eclipse. And it's There's also the anniversary of proclamation. So we got to remember that part as well. Yes. This is the anniversary, 220 okay. years. Yes. So here we are. Um, we're going to be drumming not only for the liberation of IT, the liberation of the Congo, because the Congo have been suffering uh, so long. Yes. And I, I and we're the same people, and I feel it in my in my bones. And for Black America, we're going to, we're going to, there is a knot, there is a spiritual knot in Black America, in um, Angola. That has to go. And so those are the three things that we're going to be drumming for. The, the prison industrial complex got, got to open up in um, America. And remember, you know, the, the, the European never stopped slavery in America with Angola right there in Louisiana. Sure. Okay. That should be one of the most important things for black Americans to remember that we have to burn that space down spiritually sure. because the, the, those security guards have been there since slavery. The same family in that same space. Indeed. And they call it Angola. Oh, yeah. A, a straight up plantation. Um, you know, and we remember the Angola three, which were uh, three Black Panther brothers who um, 
suffered and was tortured up in that particular space as well. Um, you know, but Angola was a, or was and is a real live plantation in Louisiana. It, it, so, it needs to be gone. Yeah, that and in places like parchment. Politicians yes. have to be, you know, that this has to be, it needs to be gone. There, it, it has too much a lineage. It's no, we 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 can't we can't be human beings and allow that that travesty to continue. Yes, without a doubt, without a doubt. So uh, I I will be drumming for those three things, and and you should also drum for whatever personal uh, abundance and healing. I'm breaking the drums out. Yes, That's yes, right. yes, yes. Thank you, yes. everybody. Thank you, Kalan. Without a doubt. Thank you. We appreciate you. And I'm a, we'll be speaking soon. You know what I mean? Thank so you. definitely stay on point. You're checking out RSTV. That was Ezali Danto, who you'll be seeing more of here on RSTV. Um, and we appreciate you all for checking in with us on this nice Monday morning. Um, it's a whole lot of things you could be doing, but instead you was hanging with us. And, you know, we have a lot coming up. So dig in the archives. You know, stay on point. We're going to keep this revolution going. We're going to keep this movement moving. And, um, you know, we're going to win in spite of ourselves. I'm going to close out with my man, Amir Suleiman, one of my brothers here in Atlanta. You know what I'm saying? On this beautiful day. Dead man walking. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad, ala Muhammad. Okay, I'm going to do one more poem. One more poem, okay? And this is by request by Mr. Man in the Back. <laughs> Bismillah. This poem also has four reasons for being. Number one is a poem of desperation. Number two, it is a poem to remind those who would like to be reminded. Number three, it is a poem to remind those who would like not to be reminded. Number four, it is to inform those that don't know. I'm a dead man walking, a mute man talking, a blind man watching, my brothers die. And I've built our coffins much too often, and it gets so dark when a mother's cry. I know more than I want to, but not nearly enough. I thought I was writing for the love, but it just turned to be lust, and my trust in us was gullibility. The reality's just that. I'm not who I was, nor who I will be, but sometimes I feel me visiting, and I fill me with the lush scent of soul, the flavor of feeling, a rush of color. I think the pleasure may kill me. The pressure squeezes and spills me into the language of the unseen, the unthought, and the undreamed, and my heart begins to pump the thick, rich fluid of verse, searching for a simple word or phrase to fill the phase between the wet nurse and the black hearse. And I know sometimes my words lack worth, lack depth, lack girth, lack the distance to travel from heaven to earth or from mind to brain or from soul to flesh. I hold my breath in a hollow hope that my hopes ain't hollow. It's just a message in a bottle, or a genie in a bottle, or a baby in a bottle, or a wine in his bottle. The symphony of me is stuck in staccato like a broken break beat, breaking the vinyl into bits of blackness, spinning in circles. Come down, selector. Last night, the DJ took my life and left the speakers empty, and the speakers speechless, and the dancers still dancing or not. They don't see our music as musing. Merely amusing amusement. How could they know in basement booths we balance a nexus between where the soul and the flesh is, where the science of intellect is? We rock genius like a necklace and drop jewels and gutters. But they fooled our mothers into thinking that they could raise sons in the darkness of night. But isn't the night always dark before the sun is raised? And when the sun is raised, doesn't he make the block hot and the eyes squint and the breast sweat and the trees grow and the children play? The raised sun makes the pavement see the wavy apparitions, the mirage of future.
but I know I'm a dead man walking, a mute man talking, a blind man watching my brothers die. And I've built our coffins much too often, and it gets so dark when a mother's cry. So now I'm walking a thin line between love and hate, between words that are spoken and beats that break. It's a thin line between a bullet in the chamber and a bullet in the brain. I'm civilized, saying the little savage in me. It's not a little savage in me, it's a lot of passion in me. And sometimes the sorrows are the control without a glass of Remy. And some niggas are fine with being slaves just as long as master's friendly. And others spit fire at mass until the Mac is empty. You don't need to pass a semi to see the assassin in me. But know that no soul is taken accidentally. The angel of death has an itinerary and snatch you right out of your Bentley, right out of your Gucci jeans, and right out of your Fendi, right out of your Dashiki, and right out of your Kenti. Allah has written his book and is no race in the pen's ink. So why do we ignore what God knows and we lie what men think? We're just boys in the back street trying to get in sync. But my balance is off. My talent is lost. I've met my aunt, but she's banned, of course, and I can hear in a voice that we're nearing divorce. So before I hear him in court, I may have to kill my dreams and bury the corpse. I shed a tear for the loss. I feel like I'm bearing the cross, but my conception is so far from immaculate. For the most part, we a bunch of bastard kids. Our fathers are gone, caught in a sacrosanct masochist because our lives are dead wrong, but resurrected like Lazarus because our mothers are strong, and our romance is about as romantic as the master's kiss, but we have got to move on, and our lives are about as painful as the master's whip, but we have got to move on, and I wish I could just sing for justice, but I know no such song. I know about Shahada, Salat, and Quran, Jihad, Mortal them and homemade bombs and sure they're gonna say I'm wrong for talking about homemade bombs but at least the free world could drop eight bombs and napalm and got a nerve to ask why do they hate us when they still got the blood on their palms when they stay long and send songs about freedom and justice all bloody day long they claim to live right but they have got to be dead wrong and maybe just cause I'm so young and headstrong but right now I'm ready to run headlong into enemy fire it's like we desire death I just got the same blood that pumps to a lion's chest. I come from a line of warriors that take off the iron vest. And she just saw this spread to the thick of the mess. So I am begging them now. Send me your best. There's only two possible outcomes. One, I can send them to rest. Or two, they can send me to my lord. I like the second one the best. But I will kill their killers and live and settle for less. Because I'm already a dead man walking. A mute man talking. A blind man watching my brothers die. I will build all coffins and I will not take part in the death of my heart's kin. I'd rather die. Oh.